Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Rostar. We are still looking at the ripple effects of new businesses being formed through the pandemic. Now, with that in mind, we are happy to speak with Manager, Corporate Governance Services at Aegis Business Solutions, Lisa Kreese. Topic at hand, the new company's registry online system. Now, this has the company's registry... The Register General's Department, they launched the system on February 1 this year. Welcome, Ms. Chris. Thank you so much for making the time. I know sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So thank you for joining us to share your insight. But I want to ask, though, what is the Registrar General's Department Company's Registry Online System? Well, thank you so much for having me. I am happy to be here and I'm happy to share what I know about the company's registry online system. This is a system, as you said before, it was effect, it became effective from February 1st this year. And what it is, it's actually an online system. It's a way that people can transact their business now. They can transact it paperless, they can track it remotely, and it's done electronically. So what happens is that you are you need to register with the company's registry for a company's registry online pin and what you would get then is access to the system so that you can then conduct your business at the company's registry if you are already registered as a in some form or fashion that you have a business like you're a director you're a secretary or you're an agent that handles businesses on behalf of companies, you are required at this point to register for a company online number, company's registry online number. And I'm glad you started listing out different types and situations. And with that in mind, we're not calling anybody name. This is not a makeout scene. But you spoke about online. When people hear online digital, sometimes people wonder, is it one or the other? Is registration no only online? People can people still do things over the counter? What what is that situation like? Well, the, the the system is geared to take it to online all the way, right? But at the moment, it has just begun. So at the moment, there are certain services that are being conducted online, where you can go and you can apply to register a name of a business or a company. You can also do a search on public records of, a, of an existing business or company. You could apply to um, register or incorporate a company, an external company or a nonprofit organization. And the, comp the system at this time is also facilitating post-incorporation filings. Like you can file your annual return, and you can also um, file notices of change of director, secretary, address of registered office. That is what it's doing at the moment. However, the view, the vision is that it's going to be online all the way through and over the counter services are going to cease. At this point in time, the services that I listed before are only going to be accommodated or facilitated by the company's registry online system. Right, there'll be other services, and I would not want to call them out now because we don't want to confuse the listeners. There are other services that they're going to entertain online at this point, but it's only going to be in the short term. Eventually, everything is done online. All right, so I wouldn't ask you for that timeline of phasing out, but we know it is something that is happening, so thank you for that. But and with that in mind, though, it kind of starts to answer the question, who must register to use the system? Because I was wondering if it was a matter of scale or if it is a matter, and you also spoke about different types in terms of NGOs and different sorts of businesses. But I still ask that question, though. If we had to ask who uses the system, lay it out for me, please, and thanks. Okay, so everyone whose name is on record or maintained at the company's registry at this point in time must register for the system, to, must register to use the system. And anyone and everyone who wishes to use the system, all right? And for now, we can categorize it as directors. We can direct, um, also say secretaries, and we could say agents. Agents would be like lawyers, accountants, or professional businesses who might be doing your business on your behalf at the company's registry. But at that point with agent, I just want to emphasize that the, the purpose of having agents uh, is like for persons who feel the need that they want that extra advice 
advice and guidance. It's, it's very, very good to have that, you know, that other eye or that professional eye to guide you through to ensure that you are compliant. But you should be very cautious when you engage in an individual or an entity to, um, to handle your course registrations because when you are applying for your cross registration, you have to provide some sensitive personal information. We will talk about that. We we'll talk about that later on, and um, we would not. You would not want to have that in the hands of someone else afterwards who may misuse it. So be very cautious when you're using an individual or an agent. Ensure that your agent and whomever you use or you give access to your company's registry account or PIN number, that they are trustworthy and credible. And with that in mind, and that, that also reminds me that we're going to be talking with a colleague of yours about cybersecurity in the very near future. But yes. Let, let's talk about benefits a little bit, because sometimes people want to know what's in it for me. So how will this positively impact business community, persons doing business with the company's registry? Well, you know, with businesses, time is so, so, so important, right? And what happens is that with the company's registry online system, this is an electronic system. It's digital and it's available 24 hours. You can access this, this system at any time, day or night, and you can do it remotely. So you do not have to be in Trinidad and Tobago if you want to say, well, okay, I need to change my directors, I need to change my registered address, or hey, I want to incorporate a company. You can begin that process at any time from anywhere. So that is the convenience, one of the conveniences you would you would get from having this registration and, and this, the, the new way that the company's registry has the direction they have taken into going digital and electronic. Also, when you achieve or you obtain your company's registry online number PIN, that is also going to be recognized as the company's registry as a signature. So you don't have to worry anymore about getting wet signatures, which sometimes could be timely because you could have signatories dispatch all different parts of the country or the world. So when you have access of this system, you can just put on your information and you could say, well, okay, I'm going to have Miss Cree sign it and you just put in my pin and voila, you have a signature. So you just submit it to the company's registry online and it's accepted. You don't have to wait, there's no turnaround time. And one of the other conveniences, it might sound simple, but it could have been a source of deterrent and a, bit, a little annoying at times, is the long lines that you would have to face at the company's registry. So that you, know, it, you do not no longer have to endure that sort of discomfort or, 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 you know, use up your time to do that. Always nice. And this is something that we're going to continue the conversation about the company's registry online system with Ms. Lisa Kreese from AG's Business Solutions. When we return, stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Lisa Kreis, a manager of corporate governance services at Aegis Business Solutions. And we're doing so talking about the company's registry online system. And yes, so we, we have an idea that it started on the 1st of February this year. We have an idea some of the benefits. But at the same time, take us through some of those steps, please, Ms. Kreese, in terms of saying, OK, well, this is something that we want to do. What are the steps getting us from point A to point B to actually be on the system? Okay, so to be on the system, as we said, it's company's registry online. So it's offered through the company's registry. It's free to apply to obtain your, to register for your company registry online number. So there's a link that um, we can share. Unfortunately, I don't think um, we, we have it up and available, but Google search companies registry online system and there's a link that comes up. I think it's legalaffairs.gov.tt and you go into there and it will show you all the steps that you have to follow to register. It will also list for you some of the documentations that document that you need, sorry. The documents that you need, I can tell you about them. You will need your birth certificate write your birth certificate. And if you're a national of Trinidad and Tobago, you would require, you must have the birth certificate with the PIN. Okay, the, 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 the PIN, you must have that updated birth certificate. You must have two forms of photo IDs. You must also take a headshot or a selfie holding an ID to your face. 
all right? And you must also, if you already have a business or a company you registered, or if you are a director or secretary of another company, you need to also at that time, you should actually, I should say, make an association with yourself and that company. So you should have handy that information as well, that company's ID, you should have that. So when you're putting in your name, your birth certificate, your address, and all the particulars about yourself, there would be a drop down link that would ask you to associate yourself with whatever company. And you make that association then and there in order to for the company system to identify you and to make that connection so it can continue with the seamless transition of you doing business for and on behalf of that company. And I like the fact that you, it, it seems as though the system has things built into it to make sure that there's transparency, there's accountability, you are who you say you are. But mm -hmm. there's also, individuals are wary when they're sharing information and you would have spoken to the security aspects of logging onto a system like this a little earlier. So you said you would get to it at, the, at a little later in the conversation. So I'm asking you to give us some of that information now where we can guard against how we can be a little safer trying to access this company's registry. Thank you. Okay, well, first I would say that the information, I would emphasize that the information is used solely by the company's registry. Your information is not going to be shared with anyone else. And then, as we, as I mentioned earlier on, you have to also take that responsibility and be very, very prudent to give your information to a trustworthy and credible source. Okay, so that your information cannot be misused at any other time because it is going to be part of your identification. So that is, for now, those are the securities. It has to be a two-part. It's you yourself. You're not going to pass it on to anybody who is not credible. And the company's registry, They that information is solely for their purposes and is kept under the confidentiality and the refines of the company's registry. It's not going to be shared anywhere else. And a little, thank you for that. A little earlier, you spoke about access on a 24-7 basis. And it is one thing to be able to access. Is this another thing to say, okay, well, notifications are also happening in real time with regard to the online system? Um, not, 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 to, not so much at this point in time because the company's registry staff, they still work Monday to Friday, normal hours between 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So say you put on something Sunday, Sunday night, they would check it when they go to office the following day and you would get an you would get a response in a couple of days like for instance for incorporations you're getting a, a, a certificate of incorporation within five days of submitting your online application thank you so much for that. and you know sometimes you're doing a tutorial on youtube and they say okay well this is a pro tip so i'm asking if, are there any top tips in terms of updating information on an individual or a company system well, from our experience, what I would say are the tips that we have so far is that you should obtain a subscription account so that you can pay online when you, you know, easy access to do your transactions with the company's registry. It could be done as a, um, a, a subscription, you apply for a subscription account or a top up as they call it. You can do this via um, your credit card. You can use your credit card to purchase a subscription or to top up on your subscription with your credit card, or you can go into the company's registry and make that payment over the, over the counter. Another thing I would say as a tip is that to ensure that the documents that you use, you're using to upload, because I mentioned before, you have to have your birth certificate, you have to have two forms of IDs and stuff like that, scan those documents and save them in a PDF format or JPEG. I think the system would also guide you to, to some other formats that you could use. I mean, I'm not an IT person, so I'm very familiar with the PDF and the JPEG. So I think most of us are comfortable with that. So I would say stick to that, save it in that format. So when you reach to the area in the application that is asking you for those documents, you could attach it with, you know, with ease. I would also say, make sure that the information on your IDs are in your current name. And this could be specific or more lean to the side of females who might, you know, you might have gotten married and your ID and, or your passport might have been in your maiden name. Ensure that when you're making the application, it is in your current name, the name that you go by right now. 
and something that could slip us from time to time, you might say, okay, I have my identification card, but it expired. So check these documents and make sure that the expiry date has not passed. So those were the tips I would share for now. Thank you so much for that. And you know, sometimes it's the, it's something that you think is right there, but then you have that oversight in the sense that you're always pulling that card and showing it, and then you, you, you didn't realize that it's expired. So once again, thanks for that. Uh, but you spoke a little bit about ease of comfort with regard to one thing, but I want to build that out a little bit. In terms of building capacity within individuals to be able to transact these things online. Uh, sometimes it's good to reach out to somebody who is in the know, who has that information at their fingertips. And I think you fit the bill at this point in time. So how do people contact Aegis for guidance with this system? Well, Aegis can be contacted. I mean, I know the tel telephone number off the top of my head. It's 625-6473. You call and you once you mention CROSS, they're going to transfer you to the Corporate and Governance Department. And there you would have one of our experts who would be able to talk you through it. I also know, I mean, Aegis, you know, we have been developing and we are considering the way the business community are going. So we have little programs and plans in, in, in place to, to share our knowledge and to, to partner know with other stakeholders which are companies directors and so forth so we are going to have like a, a cross guardian program and that this is for persons who need comprehensive guidance to ensure that they remain compliant with the cross now across the beginning is to register and have your your pin but also you will need to file your annual returns, your return of beneficial ownership, your notices of change of directors, and all of those things, the services that are under the umbrella of the company's registry. So we are going to be offering a cross-grad um, guardian program. We are scheduling that to be held in May this year, and this will be in the form of a workshop. We are, if we know it's targeted to persons who have a governance team, but you may lack the full knowledge of the requirements for the cross and stuff like that. So you can attend Aegis's workshop in May and we would guide you through the other processes to, to help you to be able to use the system in a vast way. We also going to have a cross assurance program. This is going to be for persons who need, you know, you just want to have the peace of mind to know, well, okay, I am doing this properly. And that we're going to facilitate that through e-counseling. You know, you could, um, we will have our email information and stuff like that. We have info at aegisteachy.com. If you want to have a, a e counseling with us, you can use that. You could also use the website www.aegisteachy.com, or you can use hashtag Aegis Business Solutions or hashtag Aegis Business, and you can get in touch with us, and we will tell you more about the two programs that I spoke about, which is the Cross Guardian, um, Guardian Program or the Cross Assurance. And last but not least, we have a Cross Assist. So this is for person who need to, act, you need to access a team of professionals, of, of experienced persons, who you want to handle this on your behalf. So you can you, come, you can contact us for the cross assist, which you will have like a discovery call with us. In that discovery call, we, you would discuss with us what are your, you know, what type of business you are in, whether it's a company, a nonprofit organization, or it's a business, or you're a director of a company and you want guidance in order to become compliant and stuff like that. So we would assist you in how you, would remain or become compliant on the cross platform. So we have three things right now that uh, which would assist persons with you gaining knowledge and being able to use the cross system, which is the cross guardian program, cross assurance, and cross assist. And for that, we want to thank you very much, Lisa Kreis, a manager, corporate governance services, Aegis Business Solutions. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In Depth with me, DK Rostar. Thank you so much for joining us.